Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be talking a little bit about the different training that the game has to offer. So like in the other Yakuza games, you can uh, team up with various masters that are kind of around the world. Uh, with the sphere grid system, things are a little bit different, so you don't just unlock the moves as soon as you uh, finish the training. Uh, so every time you beat a master, or beat a level with a master, it unlocks the ability to purchase that move on the sphere grid. Which I personally don't really like because I like unlocking the best moves at the start of the game and with the sphere grid it hides the the best moves at the end of a long row of spheres. So you've got to do the training and then you've got to get enough spheres to be able to go to the end of the sphere grid where that new move is located just to unlock it. It's a little bit cumbersome, I don't like it, but whatever. So after completing all of the master's training and purchasing every available item on the sphere grid, you can do breakthrough training. So you go back to the master location and you talk to them and you, like in Yakuza 5, you get to unlock a second tier of uh, sphere grid. You, you get to keep all of your old moves that you unlocked the first time around, but every time you reallocate a point, it lets you buy stronger versions of that move. Uh, nothing really changes as far as the moveset goes, but you do more damage the second time around when you purchase them. So I'm going to quickly go over each specific master. If you're looking for someone in particular, just click the annotations below and you will be able to go through one by one just to show where they are, what they do. And we can go from there. So let's get started. So first up is Kamaki. He is located in his dojo in Fushimi and can be unlocked after helping the Shinto priest right at the very start of chapter 2. After helping out the priest, head on over to Kamaki's dojo to see him having it out with one of his students as they argue over the point of learning barehanded fighting in a world ruled by swords and guns. Help out Kamaki by taking on his student and then you can begin his training from there. William Bradley, he does all pistol training, stuff like that. He's a foreign guy living in Japan. He wants to teach everyone how to use a gun. So at the very start of chapter 3, you can head over to Unyan in Rakugai and you'll see two guys arguing. After you intervene, a foreigner will show up and then scare them off. He introduces himself as William Bradley and he's got a bone to pick with the Yurayama group that apparently murdered his brother and if Ryoma helps him, he'll teach him how to use a gun. You follow him back to his hideout and then every time you come back here you can learn a different skill, take on different members of his crew uh, and then eventually you have to help him uh, take on the group and win the day and whatever. I will say that this fight is obscenely hard. You can do all of the training fairly easily, but the final test I, I had a lot of problems with in the early game, so it might be better to come back and do it after you've unlocked some of the more uh, health upgrades, stuff like that on the sphere grid. Ginryu is the sword master that will teach you techniques for your sword and wild dance fighting styles. Head over to his dojo in Rakunai, and after getting in a confrontation with a bunch of guys, Ginryu will show up and invite you to train with him. You can just go into the dojo whenever you feel like it, talk to him, choose the top or the middle option to choose whether you want to do a sword training or the wild dance training, and just kind of go from there. It's very simple stuff. I, I think I unlocked all of the moves on my first go right as soon as I unlocked the ability to visit his dojo, so it's actually not that difficult. Uh, once again though, once you unlock the moves and complete the training, you still need to buy them in the sphere grid, so it may not be worth doing them at the start, but eventually you're going to need to. The last two forms of training are just kind of uh, mini-games, really. They're, they're not really useful for much of anything, but here they are. So the Scarecrow Mansion can be accessed in Rakugai any time after Chapter 3. So talk to the guy standing out the front of the mansion, and then head on inside. Once inside, talk to the guy to begin the training, uh, the Scarecrow Mansion is a training area where you need to complete specific challenges to unlock rewards. You'll need to destroy enough Scarecrows to earn enough points to complete each mission. So depending on the challenge, you may be limited to fighting specific fighting styles, so make sure you have the right skills for the job. So coming here and doing these challenges are a good place to come after you've leveled up a little bit, uh, especially with your sword and your wild dance. It's fun and it's a neat distraction, but if you want to unlock all of the moves for your Sphere Grid, you're going to need to do it. There are a few revelation documents you get from completing the training, so basically you have to go through and you have to do each mission and then the harder versions, and I want to say it's like most of the like the level 10 uh, rooms that you need to complete to be able to unlock the revelation documents. So it, it's kind of a pain, it's required to finish off your sphere grid, So, but it, overall it's pretty easy. Okay, and the last one is kind of my favorite. 
basically you go here, you talk to Dr. Shinbei, and you can start your uh, cannonball training. He sits on a cannon, he shoots cannonballs, and you have to try and cut them or shoot them out of the air. Uh, the more you do it, the higher rank you get, the more crafting materials you get. And you can play this over and over again to get better quality materials. Um, other than that, it's another neat distraction. I don't think there's any real point to it other than it's really fun. Uh, it's one of my favorite mini games in the whole thing, and uh, it's worth checking out. So uh, that basically wraps it up for this video, and I will talk to you guys in the next uh, Ishin Starters game.